This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Britain will from Monday deploy military tanker drivers to deliver fuel to gas stations, many of which were still dry on Friday after a chaotic week that has seen panic buying, fights at the pumps and drivers hoarding petrol in water bottles. With an acute shortage of truck drivers straining supply chains to breaking point the government said on Friday 200 military tanker personnel, 100 of which are drivers, will complete their training over the weekend and start deliveries on Monday. While the situation is stabilizing, our armed forces are there to fill in any critical vacancies and help keep the country on the move by supporting the industry to deliver fuel to forecourts, said Defense Minister Ben Wallace. Indian utilities are scrambling to secure coal supplies as inventories hit critical lows after a surge in power demand from industries and sluggish imports due to record global prices push power plants to the brink. Over half of India's 135 coal-fired power plants have fuel stocks of less than three days, government data shows, far short of federal guidelines recommending supplies of at least two weeks. Prices of power generation fuels are surging globally as electricity demand rebounds with industrial growth, tightening supplies of coal and liquefied natural gas. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Oil settled above $78 a barrel on Friday, just shy of a three-year high reached earlier this week, on expectations that OPEC ministers will maintain a steady pace in raising supply. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies, known as OPEC+, Plus, meets on Monday. The group is slowly unwinding record output cuts made last year although sources say it is considering doing more to boost production. Brent crude rose 97 cents, or 1.2 percent, to settle at $79.28 in its fourth weekly rise. U.S. West Texas Intermediate rose 85 cents to settle at $75.88 in a sixth week of gains. Western fossil fuel companies looking to develop deposits in Africa need to consider the significant risk of regulatory action as on other continents. As the world moves to tackle climate change, a U.S. climate envoy said on Friday. U.S. Deputy Special Presidential Envoy for Climate Jonathan Pershing, speaking from South Africa, urged Western investors to consider whether fossil fuels were a good commercial opportunity anymore in Africa or anywhere else. There's a risk of regulatory and financial action, and I believe that's getting more and more explicit, he told a virtual media briefing after being asked about the current rush by Western oil and gas companies to develop deposits in Africa. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices rebounded on Friday, but were on pace to post a weekly decline of about 2%, with traders warning that more losses were likely due to concerns over energy prices and Chinese growth. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange gained 2.1% to $9,099 a ton by 16.15 GMT after sliding by 2.4% in the previous session. The contract, which has eased from a record of $10,747.50 hit in May, was set to post a weekly decline of 2.2%. Gold inched higher on Friday as a weaker dollar and worries about rising inflation and risks to growth counted bets for looming interest rate hikes keeping bullion on course for a small weekly gain. Spot gold was up 0.1% at $1,759.13 per ounce by 1.47 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 17.47 GMT. U.S. gold futures settled up 0.1% at $1,758.40. The dollar pulled back, making gold less expensive in other currencies, encouraging demand. Gold was on track for its first weekly uptick since September 3, rising about 0.5% so far, as a retreat in the dollar on Thursday helped it bounce about 2%. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. India's palm oil imports in September more than doubled from a year ago to a record 1.4 million tonnes as buyers increased purchases of refined palm oil ahead of key festivals and to take advantage of newly lowered duties, brokers and dealers said. 
Higher purchases by India, the world's biggest buyer of vegetable oils, could support palm oil prices that are trading near a record high hit earlier this week. The country's total vegetable oil imports in September jumped 72% from a year ago to a record 1.8 million tonnes, including more than 400,000 tonnes of refined palm oil, Sandeep Bajoria, chief executive of Sunburn Group, a vegetable oil broker, said. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.